guys, this is Pastor Joey and Kendra with Kendra All For Him Ministries, and we're so excited that you joined us tonight at the King's Table, a place where we just come and feast on the Word and spend some time in fellowship, hanging out, and just gabbing a little bit. So good evening, Pastor Joey. Hey, Pastor Kendra. How are you doing? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm good, man. We had a beautiful day here in Roanoke, Virginia, and so I'm just living the dream. <laughs> well, I think yesterday in Montana, it was negative 36 with the wind chill. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, it was so funny because this morning I, I saw on Facebook the uh, messages of people and the, the snow count and all this kind of stuff. And simultaneously, I was watching Frozen with my daughter. And <laughs> I was like, man, those people in Montana got to teach Elsa how to love again. You know, so yeah. <laughs> that's when the snow goes away. Yeah, it's so true. Our dog won't even go out to go to the bathroom. Maddie was watching her this weekend. She's like, yeah, she pretty much walks out and runs back in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's crazy when your dog won't even go out. That's right. But we keep living here. It must be pretty amazing in Montana. We just That's right. Yeah, Cra yeah. Crazy beautiful, but you got to want it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, so I was preparing for today. I was just praying and um, a little while ago, and I was going through some notes, and I was thinking about... Um, Gosh, just the busyness of life, right? You know, sometimes we're just running around and uh, don't you just, some, do you ever just feel like chaotic? I know I have to call oh, yeah. myself. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and we took a little trip this weekend as we were getting back and I was like the checklist of all the stuff that has to get done and what am I behind on? And, and um, it was funny, I was going through some notes and I'd written a little journal, gosh, in 2013, actually, I'm going to read it. It says, how do we get so wrapped up in this busy life of ours? Still, we seek to find you, but you seem so far. Mm. Like you've drifted afar, but it's really just us and our own totally consumed daily, mostly by database stuff. Mm. <laughs> What's the next checkoff list? All the must to do's. God, help us to slow down. Help us just to see you. The importance of soaking in your presence for each one of us and how that fills us more. Um, I need Jesus in the center of my day. I need Jesus to be guiding my every way. Which meeting to take, which person I stop to see, God give me eyes to see the world as you would see. And I was thinking, isn't that wild? I mean, just three, what is that, five years ago, I was still just reflecting on how um, important it is to hear the voice of God and to be just um, in tune with not getting so busy that we miss what it's really all about. And we've been talking about worship the last couple of weeks and living a lifestyle of worship and in the midst of worship and just kind of getting in a place of intimacy with God, how, you know, I just, I think the older I get, I just recognize like it's really all about being in his presence, although we have to, you know, do our day to day, but sure. yeah, there's just, there's such a feeling of being in his presence and slowing down and really asking God, like, what is this day for? Because it's for him, right? He's given us the day. But really, what do you have for us today, Lord? And, and just to get still and listen to that sweet voice of his. Well, you know, I mean, I think it has everything to do with your perspective. You know, I mean, because the days I don't do that, my perspective is so skewed on what's the main thing and what's the most important, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and so I, I, it's amazing that you write that in 2013. And, you know, it's like, People say the more things change, the more they stay the same. Like you just have to fight and be diligent to say, yeah, I just want to be aware of your presence. I want to be aware that um, it's, it's kind of a different prayer. It's like, I don't just want your presence with me. I want to be in your presence. Yeah, absolutely. It's not like come along for the ride for my day, Jesus. It's like, well, no, you know, where are you going? You know, mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. is not static. He's dynamic in nature. So it's like, you know, where are you moving? Where are you going? And it is such a fight. It is a fight. And you know what I was finding? Because um, I was teasing with somebody, they were asking about, well, maybe we talked about it last week or the week before, but routines. Yeah. Like I literally have a routine. And if I get out of my routine, like traveling this weekend, I was totally out of my routine. And I couldn't wait to get home because I usually like wake up, I have a cup of coffee, I listen to my daily audio Bible, I take my vitamins, I work out, you know, I have my breakfast before I go to work. And when I am gone, it's like I've never had that routine in my entire life. <laughs> I'm home and I'm like, ah! Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just sure. over. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. Our, my, uh, my son, he's nine months old and he just started crawling like two days ago. Woohoo! Yeah. And, and, well, yeah. It's like awesome and scary. And you want it till it happens. And then, uh, <laughs> but it's funny yep. to watch him because there's, there's these moments where he realizes he's mobile. 
and you can see him looking around like, you know, where do I want to go first, you know? And man, there's so many days like when I'm outside of my routine or, or actually there's moments where I find myself like, you know, I'll, I'll be paralyzed by what I want to do next if mm-hmm. I'm not in the routine of things. Yeah. Uh, and so sometimes maybe nothing gets done for an hour or two because of the decision-making process of you know, <laughs> what it should be. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think there is a, a spiritual discipline there that's a lot of times lost because it's not very uh, sexy to talk about. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't, it's not like, it's something that's an engagement of the will. It's not an emotional thing. It's yeah. something you engage you know, six in the morning when you wake up or whatever time you wake up, like it's an engagement at that moment. And um, I'm not talking about perfection, just maturity to say, you know, throughout the course of the day, I'm going to try to realign and reassess yeah. what's going on. Man, it's a fight. It's- yeah. Yeah, it's totally a fight. But boy, when you're in that routine, it feels good. You know, it's kind yeah. of, I always say in creative people, you know, we build healthy boundaries, not structure, but healthy boundaries. And we can just run in that lane. You know, that's kind of what you're doing when you're establishing some of these boundaries or routines or, you know, determining what's really important and what's really not. But yeah, for sure. Daily struggle, dude. Daily yeah. struggle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, talking about daily struggle, we were going to talk about um, the down and dirty. Yes. And um, what, 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 what were you saying about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I was, I was, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's pray. So, Lord, just thank you, favor over this, God, and that uh, Lord, you're just so gracious to us. And uh, so, Lord, we uh, we love you. We uh, thank you. The lines of communication be clear and open, Lord. That the words tonight would just really uh, minister to somebody, God. If there's somebody watching tonight and they're just on E and they're just hanging on to the end of the rope, Lord, I thank you that this would be a moment where they would encounter the glory and the lifter of their head. Yes. Lord, I thank you this would be a moment where uh, direction would be received, wisdom would be. A garnered God, and it would just all come uh, through your presence and through your grace. So Holy Spirit, guide us and direct us wherever you want to go. That's where we want to go in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, the, the down and dirty, you know, of dealing with heart stuff, you know, the last few times we've talked is always, it's been about worship. And um, and there was a story that, that I was getting back into uh, this last week, spending time with um, Jonah. And, um, you know, if you're ever feeling like down on yourself, like I don't read enough of the Bible and open up Jonah because you can knock out that book in about 15 minutes. You're like, <laughs> I read a whole book of the Bible today. And um, <laughs> so I was getting into it and, and uh, there was just a couple of things that really caught me. And some of it is very much worship uh, oriented if you're looking at it from the right perspective. And, and, you know, and so we know the story where, you know, God speaks to Jonah um, and he says, Hey, I want you to go to Nineveh. Um, these are people that I'm about to wipe out because they're so depraved. They're so um, evil. I'm about to take them out, but I want you to go and speak into their lives. I want you to go and tell them what's going to happen if they don't change. And Jonah immediately uh, goes to the Greyhound bus station, right? You know, he immediately goes and like, Nope. Uh, which is so funny to me because he did not need to go anywhere. He could have stayed put and, and been just as resistant. But the fact that, that the physical desire to show his rebellion raised up within him saying, no, I'm going to go uh, the other way. Um, Crazy. You know, and, and he, you know, you know, the story gets on the boat. He's going uh, across the sea towards Tarshish and a, a storm hits and uh, the sailors are freaking out. And um, Jonah's like, listen, it's on me. This is my fault. And the guys are like, no, and they start throwing other stuff over, and nothing's saving them. Jonah's like, listen, it's really me. This is on me. Uh, I dishonored God. I did my own thing. And, and it's amazing because he says, throw me overboard, mm-hmm. and it's all going to be okay. And what's funny to me is his response in that moment, throw me overboard. Because if you look in chapter 4, the reason he doesn't want to go to, to Nineveh is because of God's redeeming love. He says, God, you're always a redeemer. And so the premise of him not wanting to go to that place is God being a redeemer. And so he knows that at that moment in the middle of the storm, that God is a redeemer, intimately aware of that knowledge, knowing that all he probably really needs to do is take a knee, get things right with God and say, guys, could we turn the boat around? Right. His response, though, is throw me off. It's like, I would rather die than to see these people have a chance at living. Wow. And um. 
And so, you know, we know the story, uh, the, 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 the word says, and God prepared a, a great fish or your version might say a well. Um, um, but that word prepared is, is uh, translated a couple of different ways and depending on what version you have, but, but it, it basically has this, um, idea of at that moment, God created this whale or fish or whatever species it was to be able to be sustainable enough to swallow Jonah and keep him alive until he got his heart right, which ends up being three days. Wow. I mean, you have to be bitter to stay in that place for three days before you say, okay. Right. Out, you know, <laughs> I'm thinking the moment the mouth closes, I'm like, yeah. God, my life is yours, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's there for three days. I mean, this is a hard headed man. Yeah. And, um, so then, you know, we know the story. So fast forward, he, you know, the whale throws him up. He goes to Nineveh. Uh, Nineveh is, you know, it's a city we know is 120,000 people. We see that in chapter four, 120,000 people. Um, it's about 60 miles wide. So this isn't just, I'm going to this little small town. I'm going to stand up on the street corner and begin proclaiming the gospel. This is like, this is a several day journey through this nation of saying, hey, <clears throat> if you don't repent, you're going to be destroyed. God's going to wipe you all out because of the evil in your life. And if you don't turn things around, and he's making this journey through the nation. And over those days, it is a trip. I mean, um, there was something I read that I had, I had not seen uh, before and I paid attention to before. And I've got to read it to you because I want people listening to know that it's in the Bible. Uh, there's this moment where the king is repenting of Nineveh. He's repenting. He's like, okay, and this is chapter three, verse six. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in burlap and sat on a heap of ashes. Check this out. Then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herds or flocks may eat or drink anything. Everybody's going to fast, even the pigs. You know, it's like everybody People and animals alike, this is, I love the Bible that it includes animals. People and animals alike must wear garments of mourning and everyone must pray earnestly to God. The scene in that city had to be ridiculous because the picture of these little old ladies making burlap mourning coats for chickens. You know what I mean? Like all the animals, there's just, you're walking through town and like all the stray dogs are wearing jackets and, you know, robes or whatever, however they, that was. And, um, <laughs> it's just a, the most random thing to think about is not only the people in mourning, but like, no, we want the animals to mourn too because of our sin, unprecedented revival. And Jonah walks out because in, in, in the end of chapter 10, uh, excuse me, the end of chapter three and verse 10, when God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind. He did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. And this is what Jonah says, this change of plans of chapter four, verse one, this change of plans greatly upset Jonah and he became very angry. So he complained to the Lord about it. I love, I love the, the thing you guys see about Jonah is he was hard headed, but he was, he was intimate. He had a relationship with God where there was an honesty there. And I, and I greatly appreciate that about him. So he complained to the Lord about it. Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this Lord? That is why I ran away to Tarshish. I knew you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. It's laughable to think his tone of voice is anger yeah. towards these truths of God. You, you're filled with unfailing love. I can't stand that about you. You're eager to turn back from destroying people. Just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted will not happen. And the Lord replied, is it right for you to be angry about this? And then <clears throat> we know that he leaves the city and he sits there and um, it says then Jonah went outside the east of the city and he made a shelter to sit under as he waited to see what the Lord would do to the city or what would happen to the city it says um, and <clears throat> he went there and he sat and, and as he waited to see what happened to the city and the Lord got arranged for a leafy plant to grow there there's that word again arranged it's the same word that he used for the whale or the fish it's the exact same word God created. He arranged, he prepared, whatever word you, your version might say. He arranged for a leafy plant to grow there, and soon it spread its broad leaves over Jonah's head, sheltering him from the sun. This eased his discomfort, and Jonah was very grateful for the plant. This is, for me, this moment is incredible because Jonah was willing to sit in discomfort in the hopes that the city would be destroyed. 
he had the physical ability to go find a tree elsewhere, to leave, go wherever. His desire was so much to see the city still be destroyed that he was willing to sit in discomfort. Yet God makes his plant to give him shelter. And he was grateful for the plant so that he could still sit there uh, in, in, in not as much sweltering heat in hopes that he could see, have a front row seat to the destruction of Nineveh. Wow. And then we see that the Lord prepares a worm. It's the same word as the prepared the, the, the plant and prepared the fish. He prepares a worm and the worm eats the roots and the plant dies. Uh, and then God prepares a wind and it, it's a hot wind and it blows. And Jonah is just having a miserable life. <clears throat> and God reveals a heart thing here <clears throat> where Jonah was more upset about the plant's death than the loss of life of the people of Nineveh. And, um, Verse 10, this is amazing. This is, this is literally, if there's ever a drop the mic moment in the Bible, this is it. Then the Lord said, you feel sorry about the plant, though you did nothing to put it there. It came quickly and it died quickly. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? And Jonah, the book of Jonah is done. There's not, there's not another. God literally drops the mic and that's boom, in the, end of the book couple things hit me out of this and, and, and I'll try to be really quick with it. Cause I want to hear your thoughts. Um, first thing we got to understand, you know, that as I'm reading through all this is um, what do we do when God wants what we don't um, Jonah's choice was sacrifice, throw me over mm -hmm. rather than repent. And that's a hard issue. You always have the choice of you're going to sacrifice something. If you decide to go your own way rather than God's way. You're going you're gonna to sacrifice provision. You're going to sacrifice covering. You're going to sacrifice purpose. There's a lot of things you're going to sacrifice to say, no, I, I don't like God's plan in this. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 you know, Nineveh must have been just an absolutely ruthless place to get to that point in Jonah's life where he's so had that much disdain to say, I'd rather die than to see them live. And then the next thing I, I recognize is this is <clears throat> the second thing is this. Favor isn't always a sign of a right heart. You know, you got a mass revival, 120,000 people, a nation about to be wiped off the face of the earth. All turn their hearts to Jesus. All turn their hearts to God, rather. You know, even the animals, right? So but they're all just saying, you know, we repent. Um, in our minds, like, man, that's the favor of God. Right. Like, he must be doing something right. And so two things this shows me is one, I've always prayed for revival in whatever city I'm in. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times I've always connected that to, I better be living a very healthy, perfect life for revival to happen. Mm -hmm. I think this scripture proves that our perfection has very little to do with the revival move of God. Right. He moves in his time and in his will. Right. The second thing is this, when it does happen, I shouldn't take any credit for it at all. Amen. Because yeah. All this happens and Jonah's like, his heart is in the worst place possible. I mean, he's seeing like, I wrap your mind around that moment. And so I think it's a moment where we realize, hey, yeah, it's, it's easy to love the lovely, but uh, man, it's, it's painful to love those who uh, are, are hurtful and um, evil and wicked. And I think we've all encountered people in our lives who are like that, you know, mm -hmm. but um, as I look at this, as it pertains to a heart of worship, at some point, we have to step back and maybe people watching this, you're in a season of favor in your life. Don't, don't credit that to yourself. Take opportunities. David would and say, man, is there anything wicked going on within me? Because it, it, it'd be hard for me, man, to, to the end of my life to get there and see God have done amazing things. And then my first encounter with him to be a revelation that my heart was wrong the whole time. Mm, yeah. yeah. Like I can't, I, it, you know, it, it, it it's just chilling to kind of wrap my brain around that, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, I, I think, man, we just want, we're so ingrained to want things our way. I am really, you know, and uh, I heard TD Jakes talking the other day. He said, man, we pray all the times for, for chairs and tables, but God gives trees, you know, mm -hmm. and um, it, the things we need rarely show up the way that we want them. Um, but God's provision is there. And uh, man, I'm looking at the story with Jonah. I'm just thinking, okay, God, you know, where's my heart in serving you and honoring you? Where's my heart in all this? Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to just think, man, when things are going great, it's because I'm doing good. 
Uh, I want to always be aware, man, what's my heart condition? What's, what's, what, what is um, the state of things within me? And so that's really, you know, this message tonight would be a thing of just saying, okay, don't be afraid to allow things to get really raw. One, to be honest with God. If you want to have a conversation with saying, God, I knew you would do this. God, mm -hmm. I, you know, whatever it is, have honest moments with God. Don't be a person that edits your prayers when you're praying. Yeah, I agree. Uh, man, I have been so bad about that. Um, and so the, it's, it's kind of dumb to think about because he already knows what you're thinking. Uh, and so, so he almost like, he sees the edit going on, Yeah, you know, but to have a compl uh, an honesty, if it's anger, if it's, if it's, um, a hopelessness, whatever, whatever the emotion is, whatever the feeling is, man, just be able to speak that and say that because God's big enough to handle that. Mm -hmm. Um, and there can be an intimacy had there. that's very, very valuable you know, and, um, that'd be the, the, the main place I would say to start is stop editing yourself and your relationship with the Lord, but allow there to be a, 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 a honesty, a rawness there that things can be dealt with. Yeah, I totally agree, Joey. In fact, I was working with a client last week and we were working through a couple of different things. And I said, I want you to go and get your journal and I want you to put your pen to paper. And, um, they're not a big journaler, but I, you know, it's just crazy how important writing something down does because you, you identify with it or you actually own it, you know, you put it down and you're like, Ugh. but I said to her, I want you to put your pen on paper and I want you to write. And I want you to, it's okay to use a foul word. It's okay to be honest, transparent, everything you want to write down that's in your head, you write it down as if you're talking to God because you need to, we need to. And I think sometimes we just need to come like you're saying raw and just say, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I'm confused, I'm upset. We know that God will bring clarity to all these things, but sometimes we just have to recognize that we're in this place where we feel this, you know, like yeah. just be real. Yeah. And I love how you're talking about dealing with heart stuff because if our heart, it's all about our heart and we can get to places where we just stuff, stuff, stuff. And that's where all these, you know, heaviness comes from depression, oppression, mm -hmm. um, you know, is because we constantly, we're in this world where everything has to be this perfect lipstick, perfect looking thing. And that's not reality. I mean, yeah you know, the life is messy. Yes. And I, you know, you've heard me say, and I say this, I probably should copyright it or whatever, but I always say, we're just a hot mess. We really are, you know, because we are all just getting up, living in a broken world. And so when we can get to that place of not having to be so perfect, it, because God, like you said, he already knows the, the mess. He already right. knows everything. He, know, he knows it's a replay, like you said, but isn't it interesting that Jonah had such a, like tainted heart that he wanted to see the city destroyed. I mean, that's crazy, right? Yeah. And then here God comes and says, well, I'm going to make a way just to put you in a place till you replant. I mean, I think that's how God is. He's constantly chasing after us. Mm -hmm. And even when we're in a bad spot in our lives, because we come through seasons, we have peaks and valleys. We all do. Even in those deep, deep moments where you feel like you want to put a cover over your head because you don't want anybody to see where you're at, he yeah. sees you yeah. and he's going to do whatever he can to bring you back around because ultimately he wants us all to be in a place of revelation and understanding of his love. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was so good, like preparing the leafy plant, preparing the worm, preparing the warm winds. I mean, God did everything. And I think even I was just listening to you, like a question that probably would be asked is why was Jonah so bitter? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you look and, and there's, there's not an answer. Yeah. I mean, you can start doing history studies on Nineveh and, um, the wicked place that was and, and the sacrifices that would have gone on the bloodshed that would have happened. And, um, you know, all the signs of wickedness, I mean, it, you know, and the scripture isn't going that you, I think it's just trying to convey, man, it had to be such a foul place that this, that this, you know, it shows kind of two things. It had to be absolutely the most foul place possible that Jonah would rather die than to see them have a chance at living. Right. And the flip side is, what does that say about, because people look at the Old Testament and they say, man, Old Testament's all about God's judgment. You know, um, hmm. you know people dying and, and plagues and, you know, locust swarms and all this stuff. But Jonah knew God in a different way. Right. Jonah was, yeah, I know that place is so foul that I don't want to see it survive, but it's not foul beyond the love of God. Right. It's not foul beyond him changing his mind if, if they change their ways. And, and you look at it, you're like, man, the love of God, you know, and 
there's some, I mean, there's a lot of meat on the bone when you get into this book. And, you know, I mean, even for people that might be watching and you're in a life, in the middle of life decisions, like whether it's your high school age about to go to college, your college age, and you're about to go into a career world, or you're in the career world and you're about to make a change. There's so many people when life decisions happen, they get stressed out beyond belief. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I've prayed with a lot of people that are like, man, I just don't know what to do. I'm so worried. And uh, man, I'm always at peace when somebody says that, uh, not because I'm happy with their worry, but it shows me that they're, they're, they're far from being Jonah. You know, Jonah's like, no, I don't want the will of God. I don't want the plans of God at all. And there's people stressing out like, I don't know. I don't want to miss God. I don't miss God. I'm like, man, if he took care of Jonah, who's saying, I'm going the other way, he'll get you to where he needs you to be. You know, there's the, the that, that compassion of the father, like you just said a few minutes ago, like he's going to get you there. Mm -hmm. um, and so he might have to prepare uncomfortable things to get your path to the right place, but man, he's going to get you there, you mm -hmm. know? And so um, it's an amazing, it's, it, it's just an amazing um, revelation of the love of God. Mm -hmm. Amazing revelation of his patience with man, you know? Well, and isn't that crazy? I mean, sometimes, you know, like situations happen where I think, um, and I have had people say, well, does God, love this person, you know, who's done this, or will God, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. I think it's amazing how God doesn't want one of us to perish, and mm -hmm. there's evil in the world, but God desires for the evil to come back into the light, you know, mm -hmm. even when people have messed up in a bad, bad way. Look at this. I mean, this is a testament of itself that he would send this little, you know, Jonah, stick him in a whale till he got his head right so that he could go and save a nation, right? Mm -hmm. And the king is the, the one who comes in and says, everybody's going to fast. I mean, you knew everybody was going to obey, right? Yeah. But that, but, but God's heart for those, for the ugliness was yeah. still, I desire to find you. I'm going to tell you, you've got to get, you got to get this figured out. And, yeah. and it's like a second chance, right? Yeah. You know, it, you know, it's crazy when you look at, at the word, cause you've got someone like Jonah that's desperate for the, the, the hand of God to, to smite you know, yeah, this yeah. nation. And then you look at, some, hey, the, right? you look at the, the, the polar opposite of somebody like Abraham when it comes to Sodom and Gomorrah. And he's like, you know, he does the bargaining thing. Well, if there's just 30 good people, we can right. save this. If there's just 20 good, you know, he's like, whatever we can do. And Jonah's like, by all means, rain down fire from heaven. You know? right, right. Yeah. I mean, we're all different. You know, I mean, we're all different people there. Everybody that's watching this is completely unique and individual. God is not about redundancy in his creative process. And so we're all unique in who we are. And, uh, but there's the greatest of God's big enough to handle those differences and how we approach things. And, um, but you know, I, I would encourage you to spend some time in this, ask, mm -hmm. ask questions. If, um, you know, if, if things, you know, come up in your mind here, <clears throat> while you're watching this, send in an email or something like that, ask questions or, uh, search it out. If there's things that confuse you or, if, uh, you know, if there's things you're frustrated about and can you said a few minutes ago, man, I think it's amazing to take an opportunity to write down your frustrations or write down the things that you're like, man, God, I know you're saying this, but I don't want that. Yeah. You know, or, yeah. Um, you know, or, 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 you know, it, it could be simply just to say, yeah, um, I've missed it incredibly bad, but God, I'm going to believe that you're a redeemer. And so I'm going to write that down, you know, that I, I haven't, I haven't gone far enough to miss your hand. Yeah. And I think if people are listening tonight, I, I remember there was a season in my life and maybe you felt the same way where, um, I just thought I'd messed up so bad that it, there was no going back, you know, that what's the point I was already, you know, I'd screwed up so many times and, God will never see me or, you know, you, and I think there's a lot of people all over that just feel like um, that they've messed up so bad that they can't go back. And I think that's such a lie for straight from the pit of hell because God is a redeeming God. He does. He takes all things that we've done. And yet when we repent and we come back and say, man, I just made a hot mess of that or, you know, that was wrong. That's, that's God's heart is that we would return back with a heart of repentance, right? But turn up from our, from our old ways. Yeah. But um, the grace of God is so sufficient to wash over all of that and to start yeah. fresh. And so I just felt like even as you were talking, Joey, I just felt like it just dropped in my spirit. If there's people listening to this tonight where you feel like you've missed the mark, 
and there's no going back. You just need to hear that um, God sees you and he loves you and that you do get to have a fresh start. And it's literally just, even if it's in your journal, putting your pen to paper and just being totally transparent and honest, letting it all out. He already knows it anyways. I think the enemy tries to trick us into thinking that we're hiding stuff and we're not. God knows all things and he still loves you. He's still chasing after you and he still wants to redeem you no matter what has happened. And that's hard to wrap our head around, but he is a loving God and he desires for us to be in relationship with him, um, that none should perish, right? That's why we're still here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so um, I just want to encourage you if you're hearing this and you're hearing Joey and I talking tonight that we know what it means to make a mess of things. We've, we've done that some ourselves and, um, and we're still here, <laughs> but, but um, just to be encouraged that, that, um, yeah, that he loves you and that there is hope. There is hope. And mm -hmm. that, um, you know, like Joey said, reach out to us, email us, text us, whatever. But we want to come alongside you and pray for you and help speak some truth into if you're struggling with something like that. Because I do feel like there's somebody that's listening that needs to hear. God is the God of second chances and third chances and fourth. He's desiring for all of us to turn back to him, that we would have eternity with him. Yeah. You can never get away from his mercies are new every morning. Mm -mm. There's no other way that you can interpret that scripture, you know, and, you know, I, I'm appreciative of Paul and his balance. He's like, yeah, we know there's grace. And so it doesn't mean we keep on sinning because grace is always there. Right. But I think, I think for the people that say, no, man, I just, I don't know if there's even any more chances for me. Those are the people I love to talk to. It's like, man, his yep. mercy is there every morning. Like when yep. you wake up, it's just right there waiting on you. It's yes. like, I've been waiting on you to get up. My, it's as soon as, as soon as you shut your eyes, mercy showed up at the side of the bed, just saying, oh, I can't wait for you to get up because I'm right here, you know? And, and uh, there's a, there's, there's such a beauty um, in the desire of God and his relationship for us and what that looks like, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, again, it, you know, I think it goes to show don't, don't despise hard seasons, right. you know, don't, don't despise like seasons that are, that are brutal because most of the time we just want to get out of them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we call those desert seasons, right? You know, it's like, man, it's a desert season and I don't hear God the way I used to, or maybe I've done so many things wrong. <clears throat> you know, for the Hebrews, the desert was a place of honeymoon, you know? And mm -hmm. so, you know, honeymoon, you know, there's an intimacy that's had there that's not known before. And so, you know, it might be that you're in a season where you feel like I, I feel so far from God. My spiritual life feels dry. It feels empty. You know what, man, I, I would, I would say the other side is I bet you can experience God in an intimate way there in a way that you never have before, you yep. know? Yep. And, um, and so take courage, man, for those of you who are listening with life decisions that you're trying to make, maybe you're moving locations, states or cities or houses or school systems or jobs or whatever it might be and take heart that, you know, we put so much pressure on ourselves about missing the mark and, uh, when, when you know God's a redeemer, one of the things that's amazing about it is it allows you to dream. Amen. And may people be released to dream again tonight as you're watching this. Like just breathe and think about what gets your pulse going and, and the, the things that God's woven into your being and, and like just dream uh, again, because if he's a redeemer, then you can dream huge, right? Yeah. Uh, a lot of times creativity doesn't always thrive in a critical atmosphere. And so sometimes we're so critical about what could go wrong that we never allow dreams to have a chance to breathe uh, and give them life. And, and so, man, when God's a redeemer, it, it's a beautiful thing because creativity flows, dreaming flows. And it's, it's an amazing place to say, yeah, you know, <laughs> if you got, you say anything about Jonah, he knew God was a redeemer. He wasn't happy about it, but he was convinced of it, you know, right. and so, uh, that encouragement's there for all of us tonight. Amen. Amen. So Joey, I wonder if um, you would just lead us in. Um, I feel like tonight we just need to help people have an invitation to accept Jesus into their life. And so, you know, um, I remember as a young girl, I was uh, growing up in the Catholic church. And so I knew church, you know, I knew the routine of church, but then um, was invited to a, a place where um, I heard about this loving God, this God who was a redeemer. And, um, and I, and I learned about coming into community and coming into family. And as a little girl, that was important to me, that family. And so I remember the night that they said, do you want to know this Jesus that we know? And I was so excited. I honestly didn't know what I was doing. I just knew that I wanted to be, I wanted whatever he had. Mm -hmm. I knew that he was loving and he was accepting and he was kind and he was redemptive. 
and oh, uh, he's a just God, but he accepted me right where I was at um, mm -hmm. with my mess, you know, and, um, and I think I, we all want acceptance. We all want, we all want family. We all want to be part of something, right? Yes. Bigger than ourselves. And so I just feel like tonight we just need to make that invitation. Yeah. 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 So if you're watching, just close your eyes and just... Yeah, so Lord, I just thank you right now for people that are watching that either are, they're going to pray tonight to receive you um, for the first time as their Savior, knowing that um, nothing they've ever done was too much for your um, for your hand not to cover, Lord. I thank you that when you died on the cross, you did that for our sins to pay a price we can never pay. So Lord, I just thank you right now that for those tonight that are rededicating their life in this moment, they're saying, yeah, I've gone my own way. I, I, I've made the trip to Tarshish, and, and, but it didn't work out. And life's been a storm ever since, and I, I want to make things right. But for those who are rededicating tonight, Lord, I just thank you uh, for them as well. And so just in your hearts, you can pray a prayer just like this. It doesn't have to be crazy. It's just have, it doesn't have to be uh, um, uh, It doesn't have to be overwhelming to you. Just pray a prayer like this. Jesus, I thank you that you are the Son of God. And I believe that you died for my sins and that you paid the price for them. And I ask you to forgive me of everything that I've done wrong, every time that I missed the mark. And I thank you for your forgiveness and I receive it. And I ask you to be the Lord of my life and guide me and direct me. Lead me every single day. And I follow you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, thank you, bro. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you guys, um, if you're listening, we just want to know we value community and um, we gather, uh, Joey and I meet every Wednesday night at the King's Table. We want to invite you to come alongside of us as we just continue to release um, whatever the Lord has on Pastor Joey's heart or my heart as we pray and, and release what we feel like he wants to share with you. And um, so you're welcome to join us there. Um, community is at candorallforhim.com. You can connect with us there in our email list. And in doing that, we'll get you in the loop with um, our inner circle communities that we have. Um, and then we also have a prayer wall. It's called the Warrior's Wall. And that'll be on um, my Facebook page, which you can connect with me on my Facebook page or Joey's Facebook page. Joey Petty or Kendra, I think it's Cole and I swung there. Or Kendra All For Him. That'd probably be the best place. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the Warriors Wall is uh, we, a place where you can submit prayers. We get those every single day. We are praying for you. We're interceding with you. And then Wednesday night, a crew of us gather and we corporately will be praying for you. And so we just want to lift you up and come alongside of you in life because we need each other for this journey, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And we have a lot of fun doing it. So we want to invite you to be part of that. So we're, our goal and our heart is just to equip you to walk strong in your faith and strong, walk strong in whatever God's calling you to do because you're made with a purpose. And we want to um, help uh, mind that out of you and make that a part of your day to day. So anyways, is that, is that, stuff. Is that stuff. good at all? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Bottom line, we love you and we're so glad you're here. Yeah. And um, we're going to look forward to seeing you next week. Hey, you guys, seriously, when you journal, because we asked you to journal, um, you can um, submit that to us at um, the online ministry. And it'd be awesome. And you know what? You don't even have to share it with us. Just get on the Facebook and say, I did my journal. Because the cool thing is, is that we come together in, in, in um, agreement that when you when you write that down you're going to be set free and you're going to be released of that stuff and we also um, want to come alongside of you if you want a coaching session we offer free strategy sessions and you can um, get that on the online ministry too but just however we can come alongside of you and, and uh, live the best life walking this journey out right absolutely absolutely all right you got anything to add to that brother no we love you guys thanks for watching tell somebody about it bring other people in and you know uh, i love that the bible says don't forsake the gathering together the fellowship man this is an awesome way to do it this is just one another way that you can do that so yeah i heard somebody say sharing is caring sharing is caring yeah that's right care about your friends <laughs> that's what i tell my kids when they have candy oh <laughs> <laughs> that's good well we love you guys we will talk with you next week god bless we're praying for you talk to you soon bye bye, -bye.